closed yesterday, we were there in the uh, Gospel of Luke in the sixth chapter. Let's go back there. We're talking about the fundamentals of faith. And we're here with the, uh, the students at uh, Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Praise the Lord. And I'm excited about being able to teach in this classroom. Praise God. Yeah, glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we're talking about the very fundamentals of faith. The basic fundamental of faith begins, the very first fundamental of faith begins with believe it in your heart, then say it with your mouth. All faith is based on that. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go back over there to Mark 11 and, and, and read those verses again. And Mark 11, 22 through 25. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have, or he will have. He will. That's the strongest affirmation in the English language. I will. He will. It will. It shall come to pass. That is, that's, strong, that's as strong as you can say it in English. So, he will have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say, now, I, I, I can't read this without hearing him say this. <laughs> he shall have whatsoever he saith. So now listen, because I'm going to put this in motion right now. Therefore, I say unto you. Yeah. Whoa, if that don't excite you, brother, I mean, there's something wrong with Joe Exciter. <laughs> Therefore, I say it. I say it. The master said it himself. Therefore, I say whatsoever thing you desire. When you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. You notice the believing comes before the having. The majority of the Christian world wants to have it and then believe it. It doesn't work that way. You don't walk up to a stove and say, give me some heat and I'll put in some wood. It doesn't work. The fuel has to be there, and faith is the fuel. Believe you receive, and you will have. Praise God. And, and is a conjunction, right? Connects what was just said to what's about to be said. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Now, I'm jumping way downstream, but uh, the fourth pr pr principle, fun the fourth fundamental of faith is faith does not work in an unforgiving heart. It doesn't work if there's an air of unforgiveness about you. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you get over into conversation with somebody, I'll tell you what, I, you know, it's hard for me to understand. I, I, I just, I just, it's hard for me to understand why. I just don't understand why, the, why them politicians do what they do. There's an air of unforgiveness about you. Well, brother, come on, don't start whining about it. I didn't write this. I wish I had, but I didn't. <laughs> See, that's an air of unforgiveness. Why? That's an air of judgment. You're judging. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If I'd have been there, I, I, I wouldn't have done that. Really? What do you know about it anyway? <laughs> you want me to tell you? Zero. I was just, oh, I'll tell you. I was just taking um, President Lyndon Johnson. I mean, I was just hanging him out to dry. Just grabbing and carrying on. About, about what was going on in the war and all that. And I, you know, 
And boy, the Lord put a stop to me. And I look back on it and I can tell why. There's nowhere in the Bible that said judge those in rule. It said pray for all men, kings, and all that are in authority that the church might live in honesty, peace, honesty, and godliness. That's, first of all, he said, we're supposed to be praying that. Well, I wasn't praying for the man at all. I'm griping. <laughs> There's an air of unforgiveness about me. The Lord stopped me and said, do you know him? No, sir. Do you know anybody that knows him? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> he said, sound, don't sound to me like you know too much. I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, well, then you stop, you stop, stop your griping and start praying for the man like I told you to. He said, you, you don't have to agree with his politics, but he's a man that needs God and he's in a tough spot and he doesn't know how to get out of it. Who changed my attitude. So I just started, I just, I just started praying for him. Just pray in the spirit. Just put the politics aside and pray in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit. And you know, when I did that, the Lord began to talk to me about him. Now, I had problems with President Obama's politics, mainly because I, that Democratic platform, I, oh, I've been, you know, full of uh, abortion and so forth. I just, I do not agree with it at all. But my response to that is I don't vote f for Democratic candidates. But I had to pray. Now, when I began to pray and began to intercede, whoo, the Lord started giving me things, started talking to me about Mr. Obama, started just showing me things about him and, and how to pray and what to pray. Amen. Well, it changed my life. Glory to God. And kept me from getting off out in this mess and start judging and, and, and cripple my faith and bring it to a place where it's feeble. Since you can't feel faith, it can go feeble on you and you don't even know it because you're still thinking all the good words. But then on the other hand, over here, you're talking other things. Praise God. All right. Now then, let's go back then to where we were and pick up on Luke uh, 6, 43. A good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Neither does a corrupt fruit tree bringeth forth good fruit. Now, this is talking about words now. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of bramble bush do they gather grapes. A good man out of the treasure of his heart. Now, in the eyes of God, what is a good man? A faith person. Amen. You could have, two, and, and you could have uh, two, two Christians standing side by side, both of them lovely people. The difference in them is what they're putting in their heart all the time because that's going to change the words that come out of their mouth. Now, th this is primarily what Jesus is talking about. A good man out of the good treasure, the deposit of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. So, evil in, evil out. Faith in, faith out. Fear in, fear out. Amen. And like we said yesterday, what comes out in times of a disaster, what comes out in a moment of when, when, you're, when, when your mouth is not connected to your head, but connected to your abundance, we're going to find out what's in there. Amen. <laughs> I came home one morning. You know, this, this was back in the preach seven days a week, gone, you know, three weeks at a time. And 
and uh, come back home just in time to make up a bunch of tapes and because I, you know, Gloria and I were everything back in those days. And um, I had just time enough to run the tapes and get it all together to change suitcases and whoa, we're gone again. And, and uh, I came in and we, we had several days off. Oh, I'm telling you, you never, I'm, I'm a homebody anyway. Isn't that amazing that somebody, that, that the Lord would take somebody like me, and I've been traveling all of my adult life. I've been living out of a suitcase <laughs> anyway, but oh, I wouldn't add it any other way. But um, man, I'm, I'm just, I didn't even want to go to bed. I just want to just enjoy this, you know. And the kids are already gone to bed. We had a huge ottoman, great big footstool thing, heavy thing. Now, let me tell you, <laughs> the, the actions of a foolish person turn the light out and then walk through the room. <laughs> well, I did it. And I started towards the door. I just drop kicked that big hassock. I mean, and I heard my toe pow. I knew it broke it. And I I shouted, Jesus, thank you, sir. In the, in your name, glory to God, I'm healed. It would have been real easy to say something really dirty. <laughs> but that's what was in there. Oh. Oh, Lord, it hurt. I had to go to sleep by faith. You need to learn to do that too. And, oh, man. And I woke up the next morning and, and the, you know, the devil was right there, just right there. And, and, I, and I opened my eyes. He said, why don't you look at your toe? Why don't you look? It ain't healed. Why don't you look at it? Boy, my toe was going boom, 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 boom. You know? He said, it feels terrible, honey. Don't you should look at it. Well, I'm not going to look at my toe. What do I need to look at it for? Well, look and see if it's healed. No, I believe it's healed. Now we're getting in there. I believe it's healed. And so, oh, I'm saying, oh man, oh no, come on, man. Mm. And I hobbled over there to. And I went in the bathroom, did the best I could, and, and you know, stumbled around in there and got my hair combed. Because I got an appointment that morning over at the airport, which was about 10 minutes away. And uh, I got my socks out of the drawer and closed my eyes and put my socks on that sock on that right foot. And I'm here come the devil. I mean, he's just right all over me now. Well, look at it. Look at it. It's black and blue. It's black and blue. You, you talk. No. He said, no. Look at it. Look at it. It's plum black. It's just, I said, I'm not looking at my toe. I don't have to look at my toe. I believe it's healed. And what difference does it make what color it is? I said, I have some, but my two of my very best friends, their toes are black all the time. <laughs> so it, it don't matter. That seemed like I kind of shut him up. I, I did, it helped me anyway. <laughs> I never did look at it. Oh, it hurt. And uh, <clears throat> so I, uh, and I, I just held fast to that. Now here's another place to lose it. Gloria was in the kitchen fixing breakfast. I went in there. Now here's a good place to either get some sympathy out of somebody or get some faith out of somebody. Amen. So I went in there. I said, Gloria, you, remember the, you, you know that big old green stool in there? Yeah. I kicked that thing about three o'clock this morning. And I broke that toe. I know, I know I broke it. And, but I said, you know what Jesus said when he was here on earth, what's for everything you desire, believe you receive and you'll have it. She said, well, I agree with you in the name of Jesus. 
And she's looking at me like she could feel for me, you know. But she was not about to go down that line. This reason you need a faith buddy. Glory to God. Amen. So I went on over to the airport. (laughs) Got out of my car and went in there. The young lady um, there at the desk, I walked up there and I said, Mr. Spinks in? Uh, Yes, sir. And she said, uh, what's the matter? I said, I kicked a big old stool in our living room this morning and broke my toe. But you know what? When Jesus was there on earth, he said, whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. And I believe I receive my healing. By the time I got the word healing out, she was four or five steps from that desk getting out of there. (laughs) I was just twisting her mind. She didn't, yeah, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell Mr. Spinks you're here. <laughs> and, and so I was looking at the, about to go look at the very first airplane this ministry ever owned, little single engine Cessna. It was too little when we got it, but my foot was in the door. <laughs> and so uh, I, I knew the airplane. I used to work for Mr. Spinks and I had flown that little airplane. I knew it was for sale and I knew what kind of excellent condition it was in. And so I had my visit with him and told him what I was going to do. And so I got in the car, drove around the ramp there to where it was parked. When I got over there, now it wasn't Oh my goodness, it wasn't but just a little way, but there's no way I was going to walk it. I got over there and stepped out of the car. My foot just as healed and well as it is today. Amen. Now, I contribute that. I contribute that and the quickness with which it happened to first words. Because I'm telling you, first words are wrapped in power, particularly if it's it's shocking, particularly if it's emergency, particularly if there's a lot of pain involved in it, you're going to be, it's going to be tied directly to your spirit and whatever's in there in abundance, that's what's going to come out. Now then, let's look at Psalm 91. (laughs) The soldier's psalm. The soldier's psalm, Psalm 91, the soldier's promise is in Numbers uh, 32, 20. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high, most high. You understand, you can't get any higher than this. He's the most high. Say most high. high. (laughs) He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall, there it is again, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's wonderful. That's not only a a promise, that is a a Bible fact, glory to God, and you can believe that. But how do you get in there? How do you get in that secret place? Well, I can tell you right now, you're not going to get in the secret place of God without faith. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. The door's closed to words other than faith words if you want in that secret place. Amen. So how do you do it? I will say of the Lord. Oh, there it is right there. I will say of the Lord, say what? He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In him will I trust. Glory to God. That's not a, that's not some kind of feeling. That is a statement of faith fact. Glory to God. Surely, (laughs) I believe it's the tramplified, the tramplified, yeah. (laughs) Well, it still sounds right. Um, I believe it's the uh, Amplified Classic that says, and then 
He will deliver me. Praise God. So I will say of the Lord. Can you see it? Yes. Words, words, words are the gateway to the spirit realm. That's just a fact. That's just the way it is. How much time I got, Tim? Thank you, sir. So we've made these statements now. I want to go back again before we move on to the 10th chapter of Romans. In fact, you can move from Mark 11 to Romans 10 and it just, just flow. I mean, it, it, because this is exactly what the Apostle Paul talking about when he, in the first verse he said, My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they bring ignorant, they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now, what's he talking about here? Verse 6, the righteousness which is of faith speaketh. Huh? The righteousness which is of faith speaketh. On this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what does it say? The Word. The Word is nigh thee. It's right there with you. You don't have to look to heaven. You don't have to look to hell to bring him up from the dead again. No glory to God. It's right there with you in your mouth. The word of faith which we preach. Ha, ha, ha on the devil. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Now, tomorrow, we're going to take it up right there, so don't lose your place. We're, we're, when we get back, we're, we're, going to, we're going to be right in that spot. So, don't go away. My grandson, Jeremy, is going to be here in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.